Hi, welcome to the new Browduino kit. Uh, what we've done here is to try and make it as simple as possible to create your own controller that will control a single vessel recirculating system uh, for for something like a, a browmoster like setup or uh, any other sort of setup that uses recirculation. So a couple of things you get. So first off, there's the custom cut box. So it's pre-cut, so everything's in the right place. Everything uh, is really well cut and looks really good and is, is pre-designed to work with everything you've got here. Uh, second thing is we've got a fascia. So our fascia simply slips inside the box here and we've got ourselves um, a nice looking box. You'll see that the fascia's already cut out so the LCD screen is going to, to fit right in. Uh, so here we've got some stainless steel screws. I'm just going to put them in. And these have a hex key on the front. It just makes it look a little bit more streamlined. And uh, the hex makes it a little bit easier to clean up if you spill anything as well. All right, so I've got that in place. So now I'm going to put in my nylon standoffs. Uh, so I'm going to put that in place on my box. screwed. Alright, it looks like I was just cross-threading it there for whatever reason. Alright, put this one through again. Uh, obviously one thing you might want to do when you're doing this is just to put uh, so make sure you wipe the inside of the lid because whatever obviously ends up between the fascia will end up there forever. Um, buttons. So the kit comes with buttons. Uh, two, two blacks, a green and a red. Red for, for heat, green for pump, and the blacks for the up and down. Uh, when you get them, there's going to be a little ring inside in between this, this nut and the button. You don't need that ring, so just take it out. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and put the buttons in. Alright, so we can see here it's going to go inside the start for green, oh sorry, for the pump and black. And black. And of course our red one. And now we're starting to get something that looks like a really cool controller. Alright, so we'll put that together. I'm just going to put these horizontally. It doesn't matter really that much. And then put the little ring back on. Now once you've got this together, um, you're probably not ever going to take these out again. Uh, so what I'd encourage you to do is just get like a, a little pair of, of pliers of some sort and just tighten these up a little bit. They don't need to be super tight and tightening won't damage the, the fascia at all. The fascia's got about a millimetre thick, um, I think. So it's actually quite, quite durable. Um, we've also put it inside of the, you know, so we put it inside of the box, uh, which means that the fascia itself will never wear out. I've had issues with previous fascias where once you get acid, uh, which wort is, once you get acid on it or cleaning sanitizer, then the silver can actually start to come off. So there we go, that's tight. I'll just. Okay, that one's not on straight again. And 
obviously if you over tighten them, which I did on that one, you'll, you'll cross thread it. So just get it to a point of tension and then leave it. All right, so now there we go. So we've got our box with our buttons in there. Uh, all fantastic. Next thing we're going to do is we've got the PCB. So this will already be constructed for you. Uh, you'll have, that's for the LEDs here. And then on the back, you can see everything will already be soldered. This is not a production model. This is a pre-production. We're waiting on the production ones to arrive. They're currently in the fabrication house. Um, we've had some emails back and forth just sorting out some questions about, okay, how do we modify this to be suitable for bulk production? And that's working fine. Um, we've got our little custom LEDs. So what we've done is we've got them put onto DuPont headers for us. Uh, and that means that you can put them in without needing to solder them. So you'll notice, um, let's see if you can actually see it here. All right, on right there, there's a little triangle. And that's the, that's the positive side of the LED. And that's going to go on the top. So we're going to put that in for our red. Our red is on top. So you can see here on our little front cover, heat on top, pump on the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing with the green one. Find the little triangle. There it is. And put that on top. Put it in. And that one might need a little bit of, uh, one of them might need a little bit of pushing because there's a, the LE, LCD has a little bit of black there. So you'll probably go right underneath the uh, problem. But if you have a problem, there you go. All right, so we put that in. And then we get our screws, which are provided, and uh, we're just going to screw that into into our cover. So we put that in. And we're just going to do that for all four screws. All right, and now we've got our kit. So all we need to do now is we're just going to push these LEDs forward. So we just need to bend them a little bit. Um, so we just put our finger behind, just bend it forwards into position through the fascia for both of those LEDs. Bingo, there we go. And now we've got our he heating LEDs uh, already in place. Next thing we do is we take our pre-flashed Arduino Mega. So this is going to already have the, the, the uh, code on there, so you don't need to flash it at all. And we're just going to line it up. Uh, so we can see here we get on the bottom side we get these pins and just push it on and that's done and this is actually now a functioning controller uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a USB cord and we've tried to actually uh, we've we deliberately put this everything in a location uh, so that you can, that you'll be able to power it up with a USB cord. Okay. All right, got a USB cord. <laughs> And these pins have actually been moved further down in the production model. So we can actually just plug this right in and we can see it loading up. So at that point, you've actually got a, a functioning controller that would, that will, uh, that will work and, and you can start using, oh, no, we don't have the buttons. So what we need to do is we need to put the buttons in. So I'm going to unplug that. And that's where these little custom cables come in handy. So you will have these custom cables already made. Again, you won't need to solder anything. And it's uh, it's in this order. It's basically top to bottom and from the opposite side across. So here we've got the pump, and the pump is the should be the top one. Now on the production model, it's all got nice labels, 
Uh, well, let's move that up. It's got a nice label across here, so it's obvious which one is which. So all I'm doing is plugging that in, and then these have little spade connectors already connected, and I go ahead and plug these in. Um, it's your choice how you wire it, uh, but but what I tend to do is I'll actually tend to I'll take this out and I'll run this I'll run this wire around just through this to punt underneath the the board here and back up and what that does is just give me nice really neat wiring um, and these will actually be bent over oopsies. Alright, that's the first one. Here's the, the, the heat. So again, I'm just going to run it through. Nice and simple. Uh, some parts of this can be a touch fiddly, so I find it handy to have a pair of needle nose pliers to put it together. Alright, put this up here, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same for my up and down buttons. The order of the, the wires on the buttons doesn't matter at all. All they're doing is basically uh, creating a, a circuit where normally the circuit's closed and when the bus button sorry is open and when the button is pushed it closes the circuit, uh, which means which means it allows electricity to flow through and you get yourself a uh, another flow of electric current, which is then recognised by the Arduino. So. Really, <laughs> let's uh, let's just put it in here for now. Alright, let's power that up again. Alright, we've got ourselves some code loading. And there we go. So if I hold it down, go to manual mode, what added, yes. Temperature up, temperature down, turn the pump on, light goes on, turn the heater on, light goes on, light goes off, quit, back to main menu. So you can see now we've already got a functioning controller. Uh, and the rest of it is wiring up or putting together the rest of the box that allows us to control the 240 volt side of things um, if you if that's what you're using it can handle anything up to 240 volts that's fine so there we go that was really simple we've gone ahead and created in about 15 minutes less than 15 minutes we've gone ahead and created a, a fantastic looking controller um, ready to go so we'll take that put that to the side uh, all right so we've gone ahead we've finished our controller put it to the side the next thing we want to do is to take our box and we want to start putting it together. Now the box has everything you need. Um, so the first thing is we've got our heatsink. The heatsink is pre-drilled uh, so that it can ex so it fits exactly with the box and so that it fits the SSRs. Uh, the kit comes with uh, all the screws in the kit are stainless steel, uh, so they're built just in case you splash stuff them, whatever. They won't they're not going to rust. Um, we've also taken into account galvanic corrosion and the the difference between stainless steel and aluminium, for example, is, is about the lowest you can get, so it should reduce those issues as well. We've got our, our two SSRs. What we're going to do with those is we're going to put them so that the DC side uh, for both of those is on the same side. So we're going to put this one here, and we're going to take the other one here, DC as well, put it on the other side. We're again going to grab our screwdriver, uh, and we've got our uh, eight millimeter metric four screws. The heatsink is pre-tapped, so all you need to do is, is put them in. Now, 
if you've done this before, then what you'll probably realize is that what we should actually be doing is putting heat sink in between the SSR and the heat, sorry, heat paste between the SSR and the heat sink in order to get the best thermal conductivity. In the box, you will have got uh, four grams of, of thermal paste. Um, it's a high quality thermal paste. This is not the actual brand we're using. We've got a slightly different brand which has a much higher thermal conductivity. So it's thermal, con the one we're giving you has a thermal conductivity above five, which is very, very good. Um, which means that we get the most heat away from the SSR into the heat sink, which prolongs the SSR's life. Um, so those, and basically two syringes, two grams per SSR should be more than enough. Um, and, and all we basically do is we squeeze it onto the center of the paste here and here, and then spread it out with the tip and then place it down. And obviously because the thermal paste is quite sticky, you need to put it down in, in the right location and then screw it down and that'll be ready to go. I'm not going to do it in this case, uh, but I will show you uh, just because it's a dry construction. I'm not actually building this for real. All right. So then I'm going to take the my other um, screw. And put that in. Now, one of the things to note is uh, is that you should be uh, you should be making sure when you're doing this uh, for real or in real life, if you are putting 240 volts through the system, that of course you earth the SSR. The common way of doing that is by putting a, a a heating lug, um, sorry, a, an earth lug through. So putting the screw through an earth lug, um, so that it's connected straight on on the 245, 240 volt side over there. Now I I certainly can't. I'm not qualified, and I certainly can't give you recommendations on how to wire your your system for 240 volts. Uh, what I can do is I can tell you what I've done. Uh, if if you choose to follow that, then you're a brave person. Um, however, as with anything 240 volts, you need to consult uh, an electrician and get them to either build it or to certify it so that you don't kill yourself. Um, I'm, it's, it's very important. While this is a really cool project and it's really exciting, uh, it's not worth your life. So keep that in mind. Make sure if you build something with 240 volts that you get it certified and, and you're actually safe to use it. So here we've got our heat sink. Uh, so you can see how easy it's been to put in with a pre-tapped heat sink, easy, how easy it is to put in the SSRs. So what we're going to do is take the box and we're going to go ahead and slide this in. Um, and you can see immediately we've got our SSRs in the box, our heat sink on the back, nice and easy to go. Now of course that is not waterproof at all. Uh, so what you'll need to do is to, to provide some sort of waterproofing that you are happy with. Um, what I would recommend and what I'll be doing for this box is I'll be getting some silicon paste that you can get, I think it's a Parfix tube from Bunnings for about $3, $3.50. And just, I'm going to put a seal around the outside here um, after I put it in. But before I put it in, I'm also going to put a seal of silicon around the outside here so that when, so when I push it into the box, then that's going to seal up around the inside here. And that'll be, that'll be really nicely sealed. So, and then once that's in, I'll seal the outside as well. Now I'm going to take my other four metric four screws and just put them in here. Um, one of the things that I found is that there may be, between getting the, the holes in the box exactly in the correct location and getting the holes, the mounting holes in the heat sink in exactly the correct location, both of the suppliers are doing this have have gone to a place where they're very good with their tolerances. However, you may find that it's there's a s slightly out. And if you do that, then what you can do is just run um, a, a four and a half millimeter drill bit through the plastic uh, to give you a little bit more breathing space, or just to figure out which way it is, and just to drill slightly to the side, and it will give you. If there is an issue, then it should it should sort it out very quickly. All right.
Right, and so you can see there with mine, now that is really, really tight and really well, really well constructed. So we've got a really good finish there. Now once those are in, uh, the next thing is to put is to put our power supply in. Um, we're still debating between two different types of power supplies, either this one or there's another one that we're, that we're looking at getting. We're just trying to evaluate which one is of higher quality. Um, they're both the, the same mounting options. It's up to you which way around you mount it. Um, you can, it's going to fit either way, like this side or this side with the, the power up or the power down. I would recommend you, you mount it with the power side up. And the reason is on the inside, you can see that then it sits above the SSRs. Um, so that's the easier way to do it. You'll have some metric three uh, six millimeter screws. So you'll have a total of six of them in your box for mounting them. And here we go. We're just going to go ahead and put that in. And these are pre-drilled to exactly the right spot. So it's the easiest power supply mounting, uh, honestly, that I've ever done. I've built quite a few of these boxes. And this pre-drilled box has made things just honestly revolutionary. Um, when I when I've done my other boxes, do I have one handy? I don't know if I've got one handy right here. Um, but genuinely, I would spend probably trying to get the the front exactly right and trying to get all the holes cut out exactly right for all of the other power supplies that power units that I was using from JCAR, uh, it was probably a good three to five hours just getting the, the box right. So this is just incredible. All right, so what we're going to do now is we've got our power units. These are our power units rated to 20 amps, um, and at 20 amps, they will heat up substantially by about 20 to 30 degrees. Uh, so if you are running that much power through there, then then make sure that you are comfortable with it and your electrician is comfortable with them being used in that manner. Um, yeah, all of these supplies, basically, you need to determine that you're comfortable using them as as has been um, specified. The uh, they are These ones are IP65 rated, um, and they are just fantastic. There's seals inside the body. There's seals at the back of the body and the cable gland to stop any water and dust getting in. Um, in the inside of here, there's actually a, a silicon O-ring in right at the back. Um, they are very, very well constructed. I'm really, really happy with them. Um, so, what do we need to do? All right, so in the actual kit, you're going to get some countersunk screws. I ordered them and received them. However, I made a mistake. I didn't realize countersunk screws um, include the head measurement. So they, the ones that I got don't actually fit. So I popped down to Bunnings to get these as a, as a stand-in for the moment. And so we've got the gray ones are power in and the blue ones are power out. Um, the way you organize it in your box is is really up to you. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just show you how they go in. So basically, it's just really simple. We just take that, put the screw in, um, and just run it down into the box. Now, the you'll probably find that it's not quite, that the holes won't be quite this tight. I'm getting them made slightly larger so that they don't actually thread into the box so much and they thread just into the nuts that you, will be provided for you. Um, one of the things that's really nice about these particular, not Neutric, um, these particular power connectors is that they have a rubber seal over them. Uh, so if you're not using both the, the power connectors, then you can simply plug that in, or if you want to store the, the system for a while, then you can simply plug that in, and that's um, now completely sealed, which is fantastic. It also, if there's actually any, any leakages here, then it's also going to provide uh, nice weatherproofness going into the, sorry, nice weatherproofness going into the box, which is which is just brilliant. So on the other side here, now um, you can see we've got our, our little connectors, and we've got some screws for us. Um, what I would normally do, I got square nuts because they're because they're easier to deal with than your octagonal ones at this size however it's still a little bit finicky fortunately you only need to do it once when you build the box and that's it all right so here you can see that it's easier when you're trying to grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers
All right, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest, and then we'll come back. So I'm just putting the power connectors in. I'll just show you what I do actually normally do. As you can see, I've just on my second one, I've got the nut rest. I've put the, the screw partially in, and I'm just going to put the nut resting on top of that. Uh, and then I'm just going to hold it in place with one finger. And uh, and then on the other side, I'm going to start screwing that in. And that's the, the way that I found it's easiest to get these things to go together. Um, as I said before, it is a little bit finicky. So I will finish this off and then I'll show you, but I just want to show you how I normally do it, um, if that helps. Okay, so we've almost finished. We've got our, our power plugs put in. Uh, so what I've done is I put my power in for my normal, and then I'll be using this one as heat, this one as pump, and then I'll use these inside ones for auxiliary power and auxiliary heat. Uh, obviously you can choose to put them in whichever order you like, it's completely up to you. Um, I've done it this way because if I'm not using these two, then these two are relatively easy to twist and get out. Um, the connectors basically work in this way, you get the connector. Um, and then, oh, I put this the opposite way around to what I normally do. Um, and then put it in, twist, and that's that's the connector. So just pull the lever back, and then we're going to twist it and pull out. And that's how that connector works. Um, yeah, they're, they're really good. So I'm just going to, I'll leave all the sockets in. So you've got the five of them there. Um, you can see we've also got holes pre drilled on the top, and this is obviously not supplied. Uh, but if you but if you are using above 10 amps, then what you can do is you can actually get a an 80 millimeter computer fan. Uh, obviously, you'd want to put a finger guard on top, and then it's got pre-drilled uh, four millimeter metric four millimeter holes. So then, if you wanted to, you could run your power into the box, um, just to your 12 volt power supply, and supply power for your computer fan. So you could have active cooling running off the off of the system um, to make sure that you're getting enough cooling for your SSRs to keep them cool. Now. Initially what we were going to do was we were going to use uh, a connector that looks like this, a three pin connector for the temperature probe. However, um, that's a two pin but it's the right size so you can see this box is actually pre-drilled for that size hole. Um, however, what we found was that if we want to actually make it a solderless kit, then um, you can see this is the temperature probe that will be supplied with the kit. Um, then when you take this nut off, let's say you put a hole in your pot and you've got this ready to go. You, you, put, you take the nut off, you put the cord through the pot, you put this on, um, the, the other side's already got this connected. Well, there's just simply no way to get this through there. So what we did is we're swapping this out and we're getting them pre-made with like a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. Um, and what that will do is that will provide the ability to slide the nut over the, the outside of the, of the temperature jack without a problem. And we're getting this little this little connector here, little panel mount for the 3.5 millimeter jack. So instead of a 13 millimeter hole, you'll get a I think it's an 8 millimeter hole in the box, so you can mount this. Um, this should be the aim is to get it pre-soldered with a, a piece of wire, um, and so then you'll basically pass this through the hole, and then you'll pass the appropriate wires into your temperature probe sensor here. Um, and so that'll provide, and then because this one is pre-wired, obviously you can just plug it in when you're done, and it'll give you the temperature without an issue. The last piece of the kit which I didn't put in is the the buzzer, which is comes pre-wired as well. So we're going to take that and let's go and wire it up. Um, now red is is your positive terminal, so we're just going to put put that in. And with the screw channels, you literally just screw it in, and it's it's good to go. Um, just so long as you you're touching with the wire, and you don't push it in too far, because uh, if you push it in too far, you might find that your that you clamp down on the plastic instead of on the metal. So just push it in so that your metal is completely in, your plastic is just stopped at the edge there. All right, there we go. So I'm just going to tuck this in there, away from everything else, nicely done. Plug this in, and now it will also beep at us. So 
loads up. Uh, so there we go. Put on manual. And we've got our buzzer working, nicely beeping, and everything's working. So I've got my buzzer in, I've got all my components for my kit put in, uh, I've got all my power connectors, my heat sink, uh, all my parts kept in my, my box, and the only thing left to do is to wire this kit, and it is good to brew with. Uh, so in about the space of about 40-45 minutes, I've managed to build my entire controller uh, using all the parts that will be supplied with the kit. Uh, there will be another video showing you how to make to wire it up using 240 volts uh, to wire it up for both for the heating and power elements. Uh, obviously, if you choose to follow that, you're following what I'm doing. You're not following something that is a recommended way of doing things. Uh, but I'll just show you what I do. And if you choose to follow, then again, as I said before, make sure that you get it certified by an electrician. Uh, but yeah, this is the Brit Arduino kit, and it has made my life brewing so much easier. So I hope. I hope you're able to enjoy it uh, significantly as well. Oh, one last thing actually is really cool is one of the things we've done with this kit is to make it compatible with the Spark Core. The Spark Core is a, a, a Arduino compatible, not it's mostly yeah, it is an Arduino compatible little um, Arduino board that has Wi-Fi built in. So it, you can't obviously put it directly in, but what you can do is you get the Shield Shield. Uh, put the spark core on the shield shield and then put it in. One thing that's really exciting about the spark core is they've just released, I think they're calling it the spark phenom, and the spark phenom will actually uh, will actually be only $20 for the kit and $20, $20 for the shield shield. There is no code at the moment that will run um, this controller using the spark core. However, I know a couple of people are working on it. You might have also noticed, if you're observant, that on the front-hand side, there's this weird hole here above the heat in the pump. And what's that? what that is for is for... Uh, right there, there's a little status LED on the Spark Core. So if you choose to upgrade at some point in the future to wireless, uh, and then theoretically you get emails or notifications on your phone of what's happening on your on your broom, on your your broom Arduino, uh, then you'll be able to see that through that little hole there. And so that's why that's there. Yeah, but like I said, it's been a fantastic... Um, fantastic for me to be able to build one of these, have a, a brewing system that I can literally walk away from. I've, I actually start my mashing off and then I go shopping, whatever else I need to do, uh, and it's it's absolutely brilliant. But hopefully you get one and hopefully you uh, enjoy the, the kit and all of its excellence. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to brewing with this version of the controller. All right, thanks so much.